Hey everybody, it's Mac from Rev Robotics. We're here today to talk about our number 25 chain tool and how to use it. The number 25 chain tool is a really great way of being able to break chain for being able to use it on your robot, specifically usually in drivetrain applications. Over the last couple of seasons, we made some upgrades to the chain break tool. We're gonna to show this using our newest chain break tool. However, it is also usable with any of the previous versions that you may have. Before we get started, we should talk about the anatomy of the number 25 chain break tool. What we have is a pin screw. The pin screw itself ends up pushing the pin through the chain, breaking the chain itself. Below that, we have the cup point screw. The cup point screw, when it is placed in, will help to prevent the pin from being pushed all the way out. If your team is using master links, you're going to want to remove the cup point screw when you are breaking chain. The last portion that we have is the compression screw. The compression screw serves two functions. The first function is for it to hold the chain in place in the guide so that you don't end up bending the pin screw when breaking chain. The second function is so that if you leave the pin in place in the chain, you're able to press it back through and have no need for use of a master link. We are going to run through both versions on how to break a chain using a master link and not using a master link in this video. For breaking a chain and using a master link, you're going to need your number 25 chain tool, the Allen key that is included in the kit, some number 25 chain, a master link itself, as well as some needle nose pliers. You can find 20, number 25 chain and master links on revrobotics.com, but it's also available through other major retailers. To start the process, what you're going to want to do is make sure that the chain guide is clear by making the pin screw and also the compression screw not interfere with the chain guide. Then you're going to take your chain and you're going to set it in to your chain tool. Now it is important for you to know the length of your chain that you are going to need uh, to be able to calculate this, please refer to our sprocket and chain guide where we have the calculations and the math that is needed to know how long the chain links need to be. We've already done the math for this video, so we're going to skip that step. What we're going to do is then you're going to take your chain and you set it into your chain tool, the appropriate distance, and place it in. Take your Allen key, insert it into your compression screw, and screw the compression screw all the way down until it holds the chain against the chain tool itself to be able to keep it in place. Then you're going to take the pin screw and you're going to want to drive this all the way down. Now since we're, on, since we're using this with a master link, we want to make sure that our cup point screw is actually removed from the chain tool itself. And then you can continue to go through and drive the chain tool all the way down until the pin itself is no longer in the piece of chain. Next what you're going to want to do is take the pin screw and completely remove this from the chain itself. Then remove the second set of chain and set that aside. Take your compression screw, unscrew your compression screw, and then you're good to go. The next step is actually setting in your master link. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the piece of chain that you just broke while making sure that you have two inside links of the chain together when you're breaking the chain. You're going to take the, the pin portion and connect one set of the master link to the other set of chain. Then take the plate, put the plate over the top, and then you need to take your pin. This is the most difficult portion of using a master link, is actually setting the pin onto the device. So you're going to take the pin, you're going to want to push this down where it is sitting on top of the one pin and then leaning into the other one. You take your pair of needle nose pliers, you want to place that below the pin, riding against the top of the clip. It is usually helpful to have your fingers on either side to be able to help keep the pin in place while you squeeze this in. It will make a little bit of a snapping noise and you know it is in place. Once that's done, your chain is ready to go. You're able to place it on your sprockets and onto your robot and be ready for competition. Next, we're going to do breaking the chain while you are using the pin that is pre-existing in the chain and not a master link. Again, most of the steps are the same. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that the guide is clear so that the pin and compression set screw are not in conflict with the chain when it's running in the guide. Also, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the cap point, point screw is screwed into the bottom of the, of the tool to be able to help prevent the pin from coming out. 
Now, due to some of the manufacturing tolerances on the device, this is there to be able to help make this an easier process, but is not guaranteed that it's going to do it every single time. Some of this is going to be a little bit of touch and feel, and it's something that might need a little bit of practice to be able to make perfect. So, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you have one of the sets of your inside links ready to go. Then you're going to take your chain again. You're going to set it into your chain brake tool. You're going to take your compression screw and place that down and hold it in place. Then it's time to drive the pin screw in. Now, this is where a lot of teams will have some struggles and problems and where practice might be needed. You're going to be taking the pin and you're going to want to press it almost all the way through. So unlike with a master link, you do not press the pin all the way through. You're going to want to have it where it's being held in by the bottom plate of the chain. So you just need to do this very carefully and some of this is a little bit of feel. But you can kind of press this through and then you're going to want to back drive the pin screw out. If this is your first time doing this, it might take a few rounds to be able to back drive the pin screw undoing your compression set screw and checking to see if the chain has actually been broken. Sometimes it does not get broken and then you need to go ahead and redo those same exact steps by placing the, the chain back in, re-screwing down your compression screw, and then continuing to move the pin through the thing. Feel free to take your time when doing this process because getting it right the first time is better than having to keep trying to do it again and again. So we're going to go through and repeat those steps again, and then this time this should be pretty close to coming out. So now that the chain is broken and the pin is still seated in the bottom of the plate, what you're going to want to do is make sure that you drive the compression screw out so that you're able to seat the pin back in. On the older versions of the chain break, you may need to angle the pin back in. In the newer version, you don't need to do that. Um, Next, what you're going to want to do is basically place that where it's with the compression screw, then take your other piece of chain and set this on the interior where it's next to the pin. You're going to want to make sure that this is seated relatively well so that you don't bend the pin itself. One little trick that you can do is you can take the pin screw and hold that down just a little bit, not pushing it all the way down, just making it a little snug to be able to help hold your chain in place while you're going through the next steps. Then what you're going to want to do is take your Allen key, go into the compression screw, and screw that down until you're able to press the pin all the way back into your device. Once that's pressed, you end up unscrewing your compression screw itself. You can release the pin screw as well from holding it in there. Remove it from your chain tool, and your chain is ready to be put onto your machine. And that's how you end up using our number 25 chain tool. If you have any questions, please refer to our website, RevRobotics.com, where we have additional resources that can help you build your robot or mechatronics machine. If you run into any other difficulties, feel free to reach out to our support team, support at RevRobotics.com. Thank you guys for tuning in, and good luck with building your robot.